It shows the UK because compared to two other countries I was considering, that is the Canada and the US, the UK's process was shorter in terms of exams and even cheaper. But ultimately, what made me really choose the UK is that when I arrived in the UK to do a master's initially, I found Ugandan food. And when I found Ugandan food in a new year, then I can live here. The main reasons that I came to UK were to pursue my higher studies and also for better work-life balance. The reason I chose the UK was because I've already came to the UK for three times before. I've done two clinical attachments in cardiology. I liked the system, I liked the hospitals, and I thought, okay, this might be a nice place to work at. UK was chosen by me because it gave plenty of opportunities for doctors now. And I think uh, we should apply where there, there is demand for us. The training here is very structured. The way the medicine pra is practiced here in this country is quite, quite interesting. And this will definitely give you an edge. The reason I started working in the UK is that um, I had a lot of friends and colleagues who started working in junior posts in the NHS before I did. And I've had some positive feedback from them, mainly regarding uh, career development opportunities uh, and work-life balance. I am a cardiac anesthesiologist. I just joined Dreamen a few weeks ago, and uh, it is one of the best hospitals for advanced cardiothoracic surgeries, especially heart, lung, transplant and VADs. And of course, me coming to UK has fulfilled my dreams of having a good work-life balance. Initially, when I first got a job to work in the UK, I was really excited that is to work in the NHS because I'd heard about the world class level of service and excellence, and I wanted to be a part of that, of course. But closer to the time, then I got really scared. I was worried if I would be accepted, if I would be able to manage the conditions, if my medical training back home prepared me for what's in the NHS. And when I arrived, I feel like it was far beyond my expectations. I didn't have really much expectations uh, from this journey. I was aware of the, uh, the condition the system is under, the uh, understaffing and the workload, and I didn't really mind that because it's, it was still favorable to the conditions uh, in the system uh, from which I came from. Um, I think one thing really that, that, I, the, that I was expecting was that I would get the opportunity to adapt to the legal frameworks uh, governing the practice. Um, I thought maybe that I will have the time uh, to um, be more familiar with uh, things like um, legal or administrative requirements of the job really, uh, things like um, end of life care, things like um, mental capacity, mental health act, all, all of these things that are not really present in the system I came from. So after my internship, that's when I started working back home, I had a very bad experience and I only worked for six months back home. <clears throat> and then I quit, I registered with the GMC, I started applying for a job and luckily I got a job from the first month or two months of applying. My expectations were like I just was expecting that what I found back home it was a very toxic work environment too 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 many working hours it was just whole too much and the money wasn't worth it and my expectations was that I will not find this in the NHS and that's why I'm coming to the UK. What happened in reality uh, was that uh, I was uh, baptized in fire. That's how uh, one of my consultants at the time phrased it. So I basically was started with no real induction process uh, regarding any of the legal frameworks. And I had to do a lot of self-learning and self-reading um, uh, on these topics so that I can actually uh, facilitate uh, the job required of me. UK has actually managed to satisfy the work-life balance part and also I've successfully gone through to an IMT trainee at the moment. 
thanks to my colleagues who supported me when I came over to UK. When I arrived, I feel like it was far beyond my expectations. I think number one is that my job was a widening access to specialty training. That's the worst job, which is a job meant specifically for international medical graduates who are new to the UK to come and work in the NHS. And I feel like that really helped because everyone is aware that I was new here to the UK and to the NHS. I had a shadowing period, so I didn't just get thrown into the deep end. So that really helped me to first watch and observe others and see how things are done. And also the whole time they kept doing check-ins to see how I was doing. And I found that this was really helpful. The things work here is pretty different than what you expect. It's more about learning how to work in NHS than learning medicine here. I don't think I had a proper induction. I did have induction, but it was induction like for everyone. And up to like two months before my appraisal, I had no idea what was appraisal. I had no idea what was SARID. If you're a trust grade, you're going to use something that's called SARID. I just didn't know anything about the process. One other thing that was completely different from back home is communication and how people communicate here. When I first started, I would just type a very straightforward, direct email that some people might see as a prop, which back home, this is just normal. But here you've got to work your way on how you're going to say what you're thinking in an effective way and at the same time a, a way that people won't see as a pro. My one suggestion to NHS managers is to look after IMG when they first come to the UK outside work, not just inside work. They will need help finding the right accommodation for them, help in opening a bank account, making sure they are paid in time. I wasn't paid till two months after joining the NHS, which was not ideal. Helping them to find halal food if they are Muslims, for example. Helping them to get driving lessons or driving instructor. So all those things will help to make life easier for the IMG when they first join the NHS. I have a sincere request to make that uh, kindly help all the students who are coming here for accommodation as uh, most of the hospitals do not provide here and it is becoming very difficult to find accommodation here and also stepwise documentations of what all required after coming to UK for example registering with the GP or uh, booking a bank account. The one further thing that I would suggest as an improvement would be for ourselves to guide our juniors to a proper pathway as to how to gain and access to the training in the UK. So it's a bit difficult uh, compared to where we come from and it's a bit different from where we are. The fact that in the health system where the majority of IMGs are coming from, these systems are not similar to the NHS. The NHS is unique in a way in the administrative roles that's part of the junior doctor job mainly. It's more common here for junior doctors than it is in other countries and also that these legal frameworks that govern the, the administrative part and even the clinical part of the practice, they are not the same in countries where IMGs come from as it is to the UK or other European or Western countries. So that's something to be aware of. The important suggestion that I want to give the management people or the seniors in position with regards to how they can help the IMGs in first place, you have to consider that it is their first job. Okay, first job in a new system, in a new environment, which is to some extent is ruthless. Just go a bit lenient on them, provide them extra support. What I think that we can do for IMG is, is definitely the induction. That's something that's really important. And in the induction, we can cover a lot of things. We can cover the communication aspect, we can cover the appraisal aspect, we can cover how you can progress in your career, what's an SAT1, what's an ST1, because we don't have any of that in our home countries and I think it's essential that there is a proper induction to cover all of these aspects. My one suggestion would be to have some sort of special induction 
and also some follow-up system so for instance like a body to body system if possible because I found that while I had special induction something that was lacking formally was some sort of body to body system so eventually I did get someone that was an IMG that I was able to consult on every little tiny thing which a British medical graduate wouldn't consider or wouldn't realize it's something difficult for me I was able to ask my friends informally but if there was some formal way to have someone that you can be attached to I think that would make a really big difference because a lot of times what is difficult for us IMGs is not the technical knowledge and skills because a lot of times we've come where we are doing way more than you can expect compared to our level of, of training but what is difficult is just the logistics of things and also a lot of times things outside the workplace can stress you out way more than even what's at work and yet it's going to affect your work things like getting a place to rent phone bills bank accounts that kind of thing my advice would be to get a body to body system